When you're working with JSON, whatever the server gives you sometimes just doesn't match up with what you would want to have in Swift. My name is Donnie, and I will teach you how you can customize how your codable objects map to your JSON and vice versa. In a previous video, I talked about writing models that can be decoded from JSON into instances of your models, or how you can take your models and turn them into JSON objects. In that whole video, I assumed that your JSON key is mapped to your model structs one on one. And sadly, that's not always the case. For example, Sometimes we just use different naming conventions, such as snake case versus camel case, where camel case is what we should be using in Swift. Other times, the server will just give us entirely different names for, uh, for values that we would name very differently in Swift. And if we can't convince our backend team to accommodate us, then we'll need to try and work around that. Fortunately, we can fix both of these things, both naming conventions and different names entirely, using tools that are available to us in Codable without doing anything super complicated. So that's very, very nice. First, I would like to show you how you can map uh, between different casing conventions, so snake case, camel case, and then we'll look at having custom key names to accommodate those situations where your key name is entirely different from what the server sends you. Now, if you don't control the data you receive, you don't control the naming conventions, and that can be very frustrating if the server uses a different name and conventions than you like. For example, you might receive some JSON and it looks like this, where full name is registered email address, all use underscores in between the human readable words. So full underscore name is underscore registered email underscore address, where in camel case, you would do full capital N name is capital R registered, etc. And this JSON uses what's called snake casing. Right, so it kind of looks like a snake apparently. Um, and what we want is to have camel casing, which is the convention in Swift. Now we could define a codable model that looks like this, where we use the snake casing that the server gave us. And that allows us to have JSON and uh, our models match one-on-one -on -one, and we can just use everything out of the box. It compiles and it works, but it's just not nice. It's not following the conventions that we should be following in Swift. Right? These are all best practices and we should stick to them as much as possible. We'd want to define our struct a little bit like this, right? where we have full name is registered on email address using camel casing instead of snake casing. Unfortunately, we can't use this ideal struct with the JSON that we were given directly. Right? If we were to try and use JSON decoder and give it the, the JSON you have and the model we defined, you would get an error. And that error would tell us that it cannot find any of the keys that you've given it. Right? And that's a shame because, well, how can we go from the JSON that we have to the models that we want? Well, the easiest thing to do is to set a key decoding strategy on our JSON decoder. And setting a key decoding strategy will tell the JSON decoder that the JSON is going to be in a given format, but our structs are going to be in another. For example, we can assign a convert from snake case configuration to our strategy to allow us to convert our snake case JSON object into camel case for our models. So that allows us to take the JSON that we had before and the, the struct that we wanted to define and now everything works just fine. If we encode our JSON, we can use the same uh, approach, right? So we could say our user object is going to be just a Swift object and has the camel casing property names that we want. And then we can tell the encoder that its key decoding, uh, key encoding strategy should be convert to snake case. It's going to take our camel case property names and convert them into snake case, which our server, for example, would want to have. Which is very neat, but what if the keys do not match at all? What if they have completely different names or some naming convention that doesn't really work for us at all? For example, what if our JSON had all capital keys? If we were to match this in our structs, then all property names would have to be all capitals as well, which would be terrible. That would look hideous. We don't want that. In these kinds of cases where there's a common pattern to be applied to every single key in our JSON object, we could provide a custom encoding strategy or decoding strategy that uses a closure to transform a given key into something else. This is not a common strategy, but I want to include this either way to be complete. I honestly never use this myself. 
only for learning purposes. So for example, we could uh, write um, a strategy that takes uppercase keys and converts them to uh, camel casing, right? So we can conv uh, configure our strategy like this. And then from uppercase key would look a little bit like this. There's a lot of code here. And honestly, you really don't have to understand all of it. But the key here is that in the initializer, initializer for our uppercase key struct, we take the incoming coding key, we perform string manipulation on it to take out all the underscores, the lowercase it, um, to convert everything except for the first word to be uppercase so that we end up with a camel case string. Um, none of the, the contents of the initializer are specific to codable other than handling the coding key. It's all string manipulation and it's honestly not ideal. The thing that's much easier to do is to write a list of custom coding keys, right? If we have uh, something that's less patterny than what we had before, for example, the JSON that we have right here, uh, ID is, is fine, full name is fine, registered, I would prefer that to be is registered, and email has a dash in there, which we can't have in our property name, so that should be E, and then something like maybe uh, uppercase M for mail or just everything lowercase, whatever we prefer. And we can actually define a custom set of coding keys on our model to tell JSON decoders and encoders that that's the mapping that should be used from JSON into the object. Here's what that looks like. Our user now has an enum coding keys nested. It has a string as its raw type and it conforms to the coding key protocol. The ID and full name case are just defined as is. They're not manipulated in any way. And then we have a case is registered, where is registered matches the property name that we want to have on our struct. And then it equals the string that we're looking for in our JSON, which is registered. We also have a case email, which matches the property name that we have in our struct. And then the key, the, the value for that case is email as we find it in our JSON. And now we don't need to do anything special to use this, we can simply create a JSON decoder or JSON encoder, and it will know to use these coding keys to look for properties in the JSON file. So this is a lot more convenient in my opinion than writing that custom strategy that we saw before. Custom coding keys are actually my favorite way of mapping because they provide a very direct mapping where I can see what we're looking for in the JSON. Um, it can be a little bit tedious to maintain, especially if your objects are, are large and they change often, but I don't think it's that bad because you only need them when your keys and your data don't match up, right? So you shouldn't be defining custom coding keys if you don't really need them or if you're only converting from snake case to camel case, for example. So in this video, you saw how you can use a key decoding strategy and custom uh, coding keys to change um, the way you define your models compared to how the JSON looks, right? We, we can provide a custom mapping here and we can change how uh, the JSON decoder or the JSON encoder looks at the JSON to find the information that it needs to make instances of our model objects. Um, providing custom coding keys, again, is my favorite way of going about this. Uh, if you prefer to write your own custom encoding or decoding strategies, be my guest, of course, you can do that. Uh, I just don't think it's that uh, useful to do that. In future videos, we'll look at a lot more cases what we can do with uh, Codable because there's a ton of powerful features packed in Codable. But in this video, we only covered how to change the mapping between JSON and your models. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button, do the notifications, all these things that make the algorithm and YouTube happy. And um, I'll see you in the next one.